Hey there folks, Mike here, and I'm here with my review for Halloween Kills, which is the sequel to the soft reboot done in 2018, directed by the same man, David Gordon Green. So what did uh, I think? Oh boy. So I am super, super mixed on this movie. There was a lot that I enjoyed. There's a lot what I there's a lot what I liked what they did with this sequel. But ultimately, I left the theater a bit disappointed. I felt this was a pretty big step step back from the 2018 film, which I felt they got so much right. It was a much more focused film, and but in this one, it is it is it comes off very unfocused. They they had a lot of ideas, <clears throat> a lot of things that they wanted to explore uh, with new characters, with these new themes, and it just you know. Good ideas, but not quite, they didn't quite stick the landing, they didn't quite execute them, execute them super well. So before I get into that, what did I like about this movie? Um, Michael Myers. He is the star, he is the show. If you are looking, if, if all you're looking for in your Halloween film is just straight up violence and gore, this is it because this is by far the most violent, most gratuitous, most gory Halloween movie I have ever seen. And I think most people would agree with that. This is Michael Myers at his most vicious, his most brutal, his most violent. This is an angry Michael Myers. I've never seen an angry Michael Myers. Like, I feel like the way I interpreted things based off how that first movie ended with him pretty much, he pretty much got got by Laurie. And her and by Laurie, her daughter, and her granddaughter, he was bested. And I feel like the way this movie starts with him is, you know, with with him escaping. Obviously, that's not a spoiler because it's all over the trailers. And obviously, there's no Halloween movie without Michael Myers. So obviously, he survived the end the end of the first film. Um, he escapes and he brutalizes and just eviscerates these poor firefighters. They're just trying to put out this fire at Laurie's home, and he just. He is pissed off. Like the way he is, the way he goes about and kills these people, it is there's anger there. And he's just on a war path in this movie. Um if there's if, one thing I like about what they did here, something I noticed, I don't know if it's just I noticed, I'm sure other people noticed too. They injected some personality into Michael Myers in this movie. And when I say that, I mean clearly he doesn't speak, right? He still walks at that same pace that, you know, that monotone slow walk that he has but when i say creativity and personality he acts like an artist in this movie now while his kills in this movie really aren't very original they're not very creative in themselves and that's on the filmmakers but when you watch this movie there there are moments where michael you know kills a person and he starts to do other things to the bodies to kind of like get it to the way he wants he's kind of like an artist painting uh, like I'll give an example and again these aren't really heavy spoilers but I'll give an example like you know he stabs an individual and then he looks back and he finds a bunch of knives and he keeps grabbing more knives and he keeps strategically placing it in this person's back and he keeps adding more knives person's clearly dead but he's 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 having fun he's clearly having fun and that's a <clears throat> that's a horrifying realization that Again, an unstoppable force who knows nothing who knows nothing except killing. That's all he's driven to do. And he's having fun doing it. They actually show that he's having fun. So I thought that was really interesting. He's obviously clearly the best part about this movie. So if that's what you want, if you want Michael Myers and you want a lot of it and you want a lot of what he does, movie for you. Problem. It is surrounded by a lot of dumb shit. When I say that, the characters in this movie act in such idiotic ways. And I get it. It's a horror movie and that's like a staple with horror films, but it doesn't have, it doesn't have to be, they don't have to conveniently act in a way to serve the story. And I know, I know story, I know characters always serve the story, but they don't gotta be fucking idiots. Like, Oh my God. Like they, the smartest character in this movie is Laurie's daughter, Karen. She's by far the most intelligent, most level-headed person. And everything she says, mostly everything she says, is she's right. If they just listen to her, things could have gone much differently in this movie. And, and like I said, the movie, the kill count in this movie is 
exceeds, I, th I feel like the kill count in this movie exceeds all Halloween movies together. I think if you get all the Halloween movies together and add their kill counts, I'm pretty sure this one beats it alone. And but but yeah, character character behaviors in this movie are very inconsistent. I get what they were trying to do. They you no, know, they're trying to explore the theme of fear and what fear can do to people. And it can make people act irrationally, but there there's irrational and then there's this plain old idiotic so, you know, what I liked what they did was they, they created this panic that the town was in, is in this panic. It's chaos. This man has caused chaos. And they, they eventually go into mob rule. Like, you know, they start to act like this angry mob. And that's fine. Again, fear can do that. You know, the cops are pretty much have been proven useless. They're going to take it upon themselves. Led by Tommy, who's played by Anthony Michael Hall, who does a pretty good job. And he um, essentially incites this mob mentality like they're not doing anything for us we got to take take our town back we got to go kill that fucker you know what i mean and he incites just horrible behaviors in these people and they're just acting scared and that's fine but it's like let's be realistic here why are you going after this this madman this person who has proven to elude capture from the police themselves why are you going to go after him in groups of two Groups of three, groups of four. I get it. There's strength in numbers, but get everyone together in one group and go after them. Don't, don't separate. You're doing what he wants, and they should know that. They should. And it just it bothered me so much. And then there's like, add to the fact that this movie wants to be a slasher. It wants to be this gratuitous, gory slasher movie. That's that's one part of it, but it also wants to be this other movie where it's very serious and explores a lot of these like you know, types of social commentary and explore these themes of fear and whatnot. And they'll have these scenes where like there's this genuine uplifting moments of these monologues with beautiful music done by John Carpenter. And by the way, John Carpenter knocked it out of the fucking park with the score of this film. It's one of the best parts of the movie. He does, he, the man can do no wrong with music. And they have these moments where it's just like, all right, I'm feeling this. And then all of a sudden, they have this moment, all, the, all of a sudden there's this moment of just like, just blood and guts and skull and brain and broken bones. And it's just, it's super gory and gratuitous and that's fine. But you can't have both. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You got to decide what kind of movie you want to be. There's there's an identity crisis in this film. At least I felt there was, um, and I and that disappointed me because I felt the first movie had its focus. It, it we're gonna be a horror movie. We're gonna be a slasher. This is our story. This film. Everyone doesn't really have a direction. Michael's just kind of doing his thing, and he's not really headed towards anyone specific. Um, Laurie is essentially sidelined in this movie and jamie lee curtis is essentially relegated to a hospital bed the entire film and that's fine but she's really giving she's really not given much to do except for feeling sorry for herself and and that's not that's not the lori i know uh especially based off what happens in the previous film she's just sitting there powerless basically what i'm saying is halloween works best when it's lori strode and michael myers and you sideline lori and she's just monologuing and just kind of like saying a bunch of stuff we already know. And it's not, she, her character's not all that interesting, which is a shame. And I get it. This is the middle chapter of a trilogy. The Halloween Ends comes out next year. That's where it's headed. It's headed to that showdown between Laurie and Michael Myers. That's what's going to happen. But unfortunately, this movie's just so unfocused. And... I don't know. It's just a lot of like I just I kind of wish they just didn't try to get smart with it. They tried they tried to get clever. They tried to be more than what it was. They tried to make this um they tried to make this movie. They tried to they tried to say more than they really had to, which we all we really wanted was just a simple slasher, continuation of the previous story. How do we get this man? It doesn't have to be more than that, it doesn't. And they try, and, and you know, David Gordon Green and Danny McBride, they try to kind of inject some, well, I guess what they felt, some really intelligent story writing and intelligent ideas, and, and they just couldn't land, they couldn't just, they couldn't execute it well, because unfortunately, they're still, 
have to tell this super violent, gratuitous slasher, slasher story, right? About this killer. And it felt like two different movies. Like I felt the Michael Myers scenes felt incredibly disconnected from all the other scenes with all the other characters. Uh, besides that, the other issue I had with this movie, and this is going to end up being one of my longer reviews, because I have a lot to say about this one. <laughs> my other issue with this movie was it just wasn't fun. It wasn't fun. Horror should be fun. Like I get there are element, there's certain types of horror that are very serious. But when I go to see a movie like Halloween, I expect some fun. It's very, very dour. It's very depressing. There, there's no moments of levity. Like, and and sometimes you need that. You need that levity. The only levity in this film are from two characters named Big John and Little John. I'm not gonna say more about them because they're honestly one of my favorite parts about the movie. And I wish there was more of them. But that was it. There was just nothing to break up this depression. This depressing film. <laughs> and I don't know if that's just me. I mean, that, that, that's, that's, that might just be me. But, I mean, but again, film is subjective. And that's what I was looking for. That's what I would have hoped it to be. I felt the first 2018 film had, had a lot of moments where they got to break up that, that seriousness with some, with some comedy and some levity. There's nothing wrong with a bit of comedy in a horror movie. There really isn't. It's there for a reason. If it's used, if it's used well, it's very effective. Um, but besides that, uh, but I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm, I was disappointed. The more I sat on the movie, the more I thought about it, the more things I found I didn't like about it. Um, but yeah, obviously the, the number, the, the top things are Michael Myers. I love what they're doing with the character. Continue to do that with continue what you're doing with him. That's all he should be is just this unstoppable evil force and just let him be that. Don't try to explore that psyche. It's not. It doesn't doesn't go well. Just look at Rob Zombie's Halloween films. It doesn't go well. We we Michael Myers works best when there's mystery, and they're they're nailing Michael Myers right now. John Carpenter's score, amazing. You can see it right behind me. I just got Halloween Kills on vinyl. I listened to it twice already. It is fantastic. He he, I'm glad he's gonna come back for Halloween Ends because the the music is what really drove some of these scenes. Uh and then after that, um, <laughs> like, again, I liked the ideas. I like, I liked what they were going for. It just, it wasn't executed well. There's just a lot of issues with this one. Just too many to, to, to ignore. And unfortunately, um, do you see this movie? If you're a Halloween fan, yeah, go see it. You might find a lot of things to like about it. You might end up liking things that I didn't like so much about it. But in my opinion, I, I just... I, I think this movie's a letdown. I'm hoping they can bring it together on Halloween ends. Maybe Halloween Kills will work better once the trilogy is done. I, I just don't know. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Halloween Kills. Um, if you're a Halloween fan, go see it. If you're not the biggest Halloween fan, maybe wait on it. I don't know. That, that's up to you, though. So, But yeah, those are my thoughts on Halloween Kills. Um, I would like to hear what you think about it. So um, if you would like, please post your comments down below. And... Uh, I would like to discuss the movie further with, with everybody. But yeah, that, that's it. That's my review. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, have a great day, folks. Thank you so much for being here, and thanks for watching. Bye.